Alrighty, good morning and welcome to today's episode of Tristan Take Video. If you're wondering why I'm whispering, it's because it's 12.32 in the morning and in 15 minutes I'm heading off to the start of the Zurich to Zermatt Chasing Cancellara Fondo. Now this Fondo that I'm doing today is one that I'm calling the hardest Fondo in all of Europe. Not only is today's Fondo 280 kilometers long, starting here in Zurich and heading all the way down through Switzerland to Zermatt with over 6,000 meters of climbing, including some massive mountain passes, but it also has Fabian Cancellara rolling out behind us and he's chasing us down the entire way. On top of that, my start time is 1.35 a.m. along with a handful of others. And in this Fondo, you are not allowed to draft. So effectively, it's a 280 kilometer individual time trial. Getting chased all the way through Switzerland and trying to get to Zermatt before Fabian Cancellara catches up with you and chases you down. As you would have seen in that intro there, yesterday, or actually basically today, I had a big day of travel. I left Girona in the morning I went down to Barcelona, I caught a plane to Zurich, and then I had a number of trains and trams to get to the hotel where I am now. Once I got to the hotel here, basically what was this afternoon, just a few hours ago, I built up my bike, and then I rolled off to the start line to go and do my sign-on for the Chasing Cancellara event. When I was at the sign-on, I picked up this sweet Tudor Black Bay chronograph that Tudor has very kindly lent me for the weekend. If you guys did watch my Strata Bianchi episode a few months ago, you would have seen that I got to wear the Tudor Black Bay chronograph for that episode. That gives me the chance to do the same thing again so I've got this super nice watch on right now and then once I was done with the sign on I had a little look around there and then I went off to grab myself some last dinner before I headed back here to the room packed up my bike got it all ready and now I've had literally one hour of sleep and I'm about to go and roll out to the start so I'm gonna roll off to the start of the Chasing Cancellara event I hope you guys enjoy this episode I'll catch up with you very very shortly Nice early start here with Fabian Cancellara. What time is it? 1.30. 1.30, I've got a couple of minutes to go. I just want to ask you, because you're like half an hour behind me, are you going to chase me down or what's your tactic? Uh, I, I want to have a good time, okay. enjoy the challenge, because it's also for me a challenge. Right? You have your challenge, I have my challenge, okay. everyone has his own challenge, but on the end we are all together and we rode to Zerma. That sounds good to me. That's a good tactic. I better go off to the start. Thanks, yeah, thank good you. Luck. Good Cheers. Luck. Welcome to today's episode of Tristan Take Video. Now, I know you've already heard that once, but uh, my gosh, what a morning I've had. Since I last checked in at about half past midnight, 
I rolled off to the start line there and I feel like I experienced an entire day just in the last seven hours. It's currently about 10 past nine in the morning. As you can see, I have some insane scenery behind me. I'm about uh, halfway up the Grimsel Pass, about 165 kilometers and a shade over 4,000 meters into today's ride. To say that today's Fondo is not only one of the hardest in Europe, but also one of the most scenic in Europe is uh, probably an understatement. I've had the most incredible last couple of hours rolling around. I was in the dark for a long, long time, and obviously it's gotten light now. And the contrast between riding in the dark and riding in the light has been quite astounding. I rolled off to the start of chasing Cancellara and I uh, got there, everyone was kind of getting ready. There was some nervous jitters around. Had a little chat with Fabian and then I lined up and I was on my way. Now, as I said, my start time was 1.35 a.m. And given sunrise today is about 7.45 or so, there was a number of hours of riding in the dark. Now, what's interesting about that is I've never actually done an event where I start right in the middle of the night. I've done events where I've ridden into the night. I've done events where I've started very early, but then ridden into the daylight within a short period of time. But riding through the dark is actually quite an interesting experience. It's a totally different vibe to any other kind of ride because you kind of go into this meditative zone in the dark there now although i am doing this event solo this event you can actually do in pairs triplets or you can do a relay so some people rolled out in groups and they're in triplets where you can draft there's pairs where you can also draft and then there's also the relay where one person can ride a certain section and the other person can drive and then you can jump in the car and swap riders to get through the whole day in a more sort of comfortable way now because i rolled out at 135 there had been a whole bunch of uh, triplets i believe go in front of me they left at sort of 12 30 12 45 1 a.m and so after a little bit of riding, I started to catch up with a few people. First, I caught up with my friend Maria, who is from Catalonia. She's actually Catalan. Caught up with her, rode alongside her, having a good chat for a little while. Then I kept riding, left her and her duo pair at the uh, first feed station, kept rolling. And then at about kilometer 50, I caught up with Alex and Etienne from BMC, which was cool. So I rode with them for a little while. And then eventually we kind of split off. And again, you do your own thing if you're a solo rider. There's no drafting allowed if you're solo. There is if you're in a pair. That means for me, I had to go solo, no drafting, just cruising along, enjoying being out there in the dark. What has been super interesting about doing this event in the middle of the night is that you can see everyone up the road in front of you. And so for me, it's been a good uh, chance to kind of have a carrot dangling in front of me the entire morning, just chasing people down, slowly going past them and uh, giving myself that extra bit of motivation on such a big ride. This is 280 kilometers and about 6,000 meters. And although we've got a few big climbs, there was actually a surprising amount of climbing in the first 50, 60 kilometers. At kilometer 70 came one of the feed zones and I decided I would stop at this one because I uh, just wanted to get something into my legs. Cool to see heaps of people stopping and obviously cool to see the amount of support the event gives with all the food you could possibly need. I did quite a short stop there and then I kept rolling into the first of kind of three main climbs for today. That one was the Glaubenberg. Now obviously because I'm riding in the dark, it's kind of hard to show you guys exactly what a uh, big Swiss mountain looks like in the dark, but I can tell you it was actually quite long. It actually got some real steep sections in the middle there. So I was kind of pushing on the pedals quite hard, following one guy who was pushing quite hard got to the top got real chilly so i put on my gilet started descending down the other side and then stopped at another feed zone that feed zone came at about kilometer 97 and then after that i kept rolling really chilly descent but thankfully the sun was just starting to come up or well, no, the sun wasn't starting to come up. The uh, sky was starting to get light. And as we descended off the Glaubenberg there, you could see the lights of this town down the bottom, which just looked spectacular. That was at around 5.30 a.m. or so. And then about 10 k's later, we got to the bottom of the descent, turned right and then headed along the lake as the sky was starting to get a bit lighter. After a little while of rolling along the lake, the sky really started to get a bit more light to it. And eventually we got this mad sunrise. I just had to stop for it. As I was going up the Bruning Pass, I was thinking the scenery was stunning with that sunrise, but man, when I got to the top of the Bruning Pass, that's when things started to get real, real good. That descent off there with that sunrise and that scenery, probably some of the best riding I've ever done in my life. A smooth road, this ridiculous sunrise, incredible mountains. And then I turned right and started heading up the Grimsel Pass. This is like 
unreal. I am just trying to soak it up so much while also taking photos for Strava and Instagram and stuff and videos for this vlog, obviously. But my God, it's just unbelievably stunning. After riding in the dark for six hours, to have light in the sky and these sort of mountains around, oh man, <laughs> I can't believe how, how stunning this is. Better get my shit together though, because I'm just about to start up the Grimsel Pass, which is 25 kilometers long. Fancy seeing another Aussie in uh, what's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing here? Oh mate, just riding my bike. Let me have a chat with you, Cameron Nichols. First time on the vlog. Yes. Another Thank you Aussie. For me. <laughs> oh mate, good to have you on the on the channel. Yeah. Uh, a big star like yourself. How's your morning been? Uh, it's been interesting. I'm still a bit jet lagged. Um, I had about three hours sleep, and I'm doing uh, this whole thing with Fabian. You're so doing the relay. We're doing the relay. So I've just been in the car for like two hours, and um, I've ridden for 50k. So my leg, I've got proper cafe legs. But, yeah. uh, Fabian's arriving any minute, and then I'm gonna go up this. I think we've got a big climb. So. Yeah, this is a big one. This is the main event. Yes. This is a 25 kilometer. Are we just on it now? This is the start. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just get, to have, just get out of the car yeah, on yeah, dead yeah. legs and get straight into it. You might want to roll like 500 meters <laughs> and just start coming back up. Spin the legs. How has the 50 k's been? What have you done? Climbs? Have you done flat? What's your? It was pitch black. I could have been in any country. I could have been <laughs> anywhere. I had no idea. And then we're in the car. The sun's rising, and you just rip your face off. Yeah. The scenery is just. Unbelievable, so mate, wait until you get to the top of this. Yeah, but it's a tough one, and it'll take you a good, I reckon, two hours. Okay, so All right. you can tie me up, mate. No, I can barely tie myself up. Why are you here, man? <laughs> I was waiting win. for you. Hey, you should win. Can you put on my bus? Oh, do you have to swap the band? You're the captain de la route. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's actually really warm. Oh, can you do that again? Okay. <laughs> 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 Alright, see you guys later. Let's do this cam with your <laughs> illegal socks. Yeah, see you at the top. Yep. And so all of that leads me up to where I am right now. As I said, I'm about, uh, well, I was halfway up the Grimsel Pass now, I'm about two thirds or even three quarters of the way up the Grimsel Pass. This is the biggest climb of today. It's about 25 k's long, so a real beast. I've been climbing for quite a while now, just loving this scenery. I love big days like this in the mountains by myself, so this is the perfect chance to kind of have a big day by myself with a whole bunch of other people. Got about uh, 110 kilometers left to go, so over the top of this one, down the other side, big long climb up to Zermatt. I'll catch up with you guys shortly. good was that descent holy dooly I've just started up the uh, the last climb of the day which is not really considered a categorized climb but that last descent there whew, that was incredible off the Grimsel Pass obviously at the top there with that ribbon road snaking down below and then got into the second half of the descent which 
I came across Fabian and Cam. They were doing their sort of uh, swap over because they're doing the relay. So Fabian was like, hey, do you want to ride alongside me for a while? So I descended for about 25, 30 kilometers alongside Fabian, which is absolutely amazing given when I got into riding, Fabian was the guy that I looked up to three times Paru Bay, three times Flanders, multiple Strata Bianchi. He's uh, definitively one of the greatest cyclists of all time. So for him to say to me, hey, do you want to ride alongside me for a while was pretty epic. So cheers to Fabian for that. And uh, he was also on the brand new BMC Team Machine R. So that was pretty sick to see him riding that thing. It's also amazing how much power he still has in his legs. Just uh, trying to keep up with him on a descent, falls flat downhill, railing some corners. I could barely keep up. I had to catch back up on the, on the flat bits, but uh, such good times. And then turned right and started up the last climb up to Zamat. About 15 k's left to ride, 15 to 20 k's left to ride. This nice big long valley road. For anyone wondering, it's one o'clock in the afternoon. So been going for a while now on one hour of sleep. So. I'm pretty exhausted, my legs are pretty wrecked, but I think I've got this last 15 to 20 Ks in me. Hopefully caffeine is a godsend. And also just this weather, and as I've said many, many times, the scenery today. Once we came out of the dark there and the sun started coming up, never seen anything like it. I'm gonna cruise my way up this final few Ks, get myself to the finish line, have a well-earned beer, a good sleep, and uh, yeah, let me get there and I'll chat to you guys once I'm there. And that brings us up to the end of today, the end of chasing Cancellara. An amazing day of scenery. I loved every moment of today's ride and coming into the finish there, Fabian and Cam caught up with me and they rolled into the finish. I kind of followed them in with a few other people who were some of the first people to come in. What a day out there. The 280 kilometers and just shy of 6,000 meters. I think it was just 12 meters shy of 6,000 meters. So a shame not to get to 6,000 meters, but I am absolutely toast. As I said, as I was going up the Grimsel Pass there though, I love riding my bike in the mountains. I love riding my bike by myself and today was a great chance to ride my bike by myself in the mountains surrounded by a bunch of other people doing the same thing and absolutely loving it. Before I go I want to say a massive thank you to Chase and Cancellara and also to Tudor Watch for bringing me out here this weekend. I've been in Switzerland for less than 24 hours and I've had an absolute blast. This country is just incredible. If you want to see the ride on my Strava feel free to check that out. The link is in the description and if you want to see anything more about the event including how to come and do it yourself definitely check out the link in the description as well. If you guys have enjoyed watching, please chuck a like on the video. And if you enjoyed the style of this video, please consider subscribing as well. I'll see you guys all in another episode of Tristan Take Video very, very soon. Alrighty, and eagle.